Today we will discuss about the drug treatment of convulsive status epilepticus in children, the second most common pediatric emergency with a general pediatrician is called in to treat even today in the era of subspecialty and ICU care. And when I say early, I'm concentrating on the treatment before the patient is transferred to ICU or has to be transferred to ICU. And uh, I'll be, my target audience is uh, general pediatricians like me. And why am I picked up this subject? Is just because of the reason that there have been new developments in this special, in this emergency, in the treatment of this emergency. I will run through some of the underlying principles which guide the management of status epilepticus. Status epilepticus is a medical emergency characterized either by continued seizures or the lack of full recovery between seizures. The previous definition of status epilepticus as epileptic activity persisting for more than 30 minutes has been superseded with the aim of limiting the irreversible neurological damage that has been shown in animal models. Clinicians have long urged instead to intervene early in the disorder, typically when the seizures have persisted beyond five minutes. The clinical goal was driven by studies demonstrating that longer seizures predicts a longer duration of status epilepticus and poorer prognosis. Therefore, this has resulted in the activity that hit hard and hit, hit early and hit it hard. This is a principle in the management of SC because we want to control it as early as possible. And when you, this translates into practice as use the maximum infusion rates of anti-seizure drugs at appropriate dose. This is a common mistake made by many people. They give it too slowly because they are worried about the side effects or give at half the approach, give the lowermost dose, which is advised in any of the textbooks. You have to give the appropriate dose and probably the maximum dose that is allowed. Then only you, are, you will be hitting it early and hitting it hard. Based on these principles, the International League Against Epilepsy Task Force on Classification of Status Epilepticus, Epilepticus provides for two operational time points. The onset of abnormally prolonged seizures is known as T1 and, and the onset of long-term consequences are known as T2. These time points vary depending on the time of seizures. Now we should start intervening at T1 and if we have to succeed, we have to succeed controlling the status epilepticus by T2, the time interval. Now if I show this, in a, in a time frame, if you take this as generalized convulsive status epilepticus, up to five minutes you can wait because majority of the, some of the seizures may stop at the five minute interval. T1 is five minutes. If a seizure, generalized convulsive status epilepticus, convulsion seizures doesn't stop by five minutes, it is unlikely to stop without intervention. Therefore, you start intervening at five minutes and by 30 minutes, you should have control. Otherwise, what happens is it goes into prolonged seizures and there are chances of the brain damage. Therefore, 5 to 20, 30 minutes is a time interval which we get for controlling the seizures. That is for generalized convulsive status epilepticus, which we are dealing with today. For focal seizures, I would just say up to 10 minutes will be T1 and you can control it by 60 minutes. You have more time to control. Absent seizures, you should have intervened by 15 minutes. You can wait till 15 minutes and till what time before you should control is not properly known. It's better to keep in mind certain other facts about SC. Despite the higher instance of status epilepticus in children than adults, the overall mortality of status epilepticus is lower in children than in adults. Mortality is lower in children. Continued seizure activity can be further divided into early status, that is 5 to 30 minutes, established status, more than 30 minutes, and refractory status epilepticus, when the ongoing status epilepticus continues, despite administration of two to three appropriately dose anti-seizure medication. Now, this is a very important fact. It's a well known that status epilepticus etiologies have some 
SCs are less responsive than others. Some are extremely difficult to treat, such as auto-inflammatory causes like autoimmune encephalitis, etc., and also brain trauma. But at the moment, we treat them all the same. Whatever the etiologies, right now we have the same protocol of management. This has been commented upon by the Indian authors who say that unlike the best major, good number of our patients, one third to one half of our patients, children, may have an underlying etiology like viral encephalitis. Even in the West, they say that the present protocol is like having multiple nails, but using a, which we are trying to hammer with a single with we are trying to hammer with a single hammer, multiple nails, single hammer, it will not work. But therefore, this is bound to change as time goes on. For example, it is well known that if you have drug induced uh, status epilepticus like cocaine or some other drug abuse, phenantoin does not work very well. Therefore, there are certain medications which do not occur when the etiology when we know the etiology. But whatever it is, right now, all it, we are ignoring the etiology and managing all status epilepticus with the same protocol. Five minutes is the time at which we start interfering. This first time we give, start giving the medication for convulsion, any convulsion. There's no controversy regarding this. The Neurocritical Care Society guidelines states that benzodiazepine remain the emergence initial therapy at five minutes based on both available evidence and expert consensus. When possible, intravenous benzodiazepine administration is preferred. The American Epilepsy Society guideline concludes there are three equivalent first-line options. That is including intravenous lorazepam, 0.1 mg per kg, repeated once if needed. Note this down. This will come for discussion as we go along. And they state that intravenous diazepam and intramuscular midazolam and intravenous lorazepam are three equivalent first-line options. This is rather surprising to us because normally most of us consider lorazepam acts fast like other medication, has the advantage of having a long half-life. They say it is anti-convulsant activity. Half-life is about four, four to six hours and the sedation goes on for about a day. While diazepam, the half-life for anticonvulsant activity is 10 to 15 minutes and metazolam is five to 10 minutes, more or less. But in spite of all this, the American Epilepsy Society says that these are three equivalent first-line medication. And the top of it, it, in real life, there is no difference in respiratory depression. Here also, most of the pharmacology textbooks would tell you lorazepam has less De respiratory depression. Now, this is not only really from Western literature. Uh, the Indian literature, here in, in an editorial in Pediatric Convulsive Status Epilepticus, as late as March 2020, act fast no matter with what, Professor Mohammed Gunji states in an editorial comment states, though the form acute stage, the first stage, seizure controlled benzodiazepines are the main treatment superiority of lorazepam is challenged by many studies and current conclusion is that intramuscular midazolam and intravenous diazepam are as effective as intravenous lorazepam. Now, what is the carry home message is that if you have intravenous lorazepam, probably use it because that is pharmacologically definitely superior though the real life situation, it is not showing that evidence. But if you don't have it, no, shed no tears, use intravenous diazepam. And if you still don't have, if you don't have an intravenous line, don't panic, give intramuscular metazolam. In fact, intravenous metazolam may score over intravenous administration because you might give it earlier than when you are wa wa wasting time trying for an IV line. Now you might be trying, wondering why metazolam alone is given as I am. Why not, why not uh, diazepam and lorazepam? Metazolam is a water-soluble benzodiazepine. At physiological pH, metazolam undergoes a confrontational change to become lipophilic. Its water solubility allows metazolam to be administered via multiple routes, including intramuscular injection. Now, let me tell you, metazolam buckle is very popular because UK uses it very often. Therefore, metazolam is popular both in IM, IV, as well as 
buccal root as well as for infusion. It's not rare to find yourself in a position in which you have a child who's convulsing for five minutes and you don't have an IV access. As already discussed, you can give IM metazolone, which is supposed to be equally effective. That would be the first choice. Now, if, if intramuscular metazolone is not an option for you, intranasal metazolone is, can also be considered as a second option. Because in India, this is very well, it's quite popular, and many patients carry this along with them. And further, in an editorial in Childhood Status Epilepticus, the current status and future directions, Vina Calaria states, in Indian pediatrics and as late as 2020. In fact, this uh, status epilepticus, uh, this journal article, uh, journal has four editorials. They say rectal diazepam, buccal medicine, and oral lorazepam have now been superseded by intranasal medicine. Intracentral medicine exhibited best efficacy for non venous treatment of status epilepticus in recent meta analysis. I'm sure they do, They have not compared it with IM metazolone, which should definitely be superior. Therefore, the Indian literature gives it a thumb up, thumbs up even in an editorial. But this enthusiasm is not shared in Western literature. In a Cochrane review as late as 2018 by the well-known by the well-known author Appleton, states that there's no evidence provided by this review to support the use of intranasal metazolone or lorazepam as alternative to buccal metazolam or rectal diazepam. There is no good evidence that intranasal route is as effective as the intravenous route. Consequently, there is no evidence that it can be used as alternate route of administration. Therefore, in other words, the intranasal metazolam is not supposed to be superior to uh, buccal metazolam and rectal diazepam as per Western literature. And the other drugs which can be tried is lorazepam, intranasal, buccal metazolam, and rectal diazepam. I am not sure all of these are available in India. If you are in NHS in, in UK, buccal metazolam is the most common drug used uh, before they come to the ER. And diazepam rectal is very popular in America. There are a lot of studies which show buccal metazolam is superior to the rectal diazepam, but some studies do say that there is no superiority. But in India, probably because intranasal metazolam is available and there is Indian literature to support its use, if you don't, if you cannot give IM, you probably can use intranasal metazolam as the next drug of choice when IV access is not available. Now coming to the second dose of benzodiazepine at 10 minutes. If the seizures does not terminate in 5 to 10 minutes after giving the first dose, I mean, uh, following initial benzodiazepine administration, then the second benzodiazepine dose should be administered. This is the usual practice, and this is usually given in most of the guidelines. Administer a maximum of two doses of the first line, including pre-hospital treatment. What you have to be careful is if the patient has taken metazolam nasal spray or has taken buccal metazolam at home, that should be counted as one dose and the one given in the ER as IV lorazepam should be taken second. You should not give a third dose. Status epilepticus treated according to guidelines can be expected to resolve in about 70% of the patients after the first line treatment with benzodiazepine. What is important, remember, 30% do not respond. Now, this is now this is considered the standard practice. Don't be surprised, even if you, if you find in a standard test book by the Nelson's test book of pediatrics, it says the first dose, wait for zero to five minutes, give the first dose of lorazepam between five and 20 minutes. Therefore, this is 2016, the American Epileptic Society, American Epileptic Society also second this. The same thing is given in Nelson's test book of pediatrics, 21st edition. And you don't find even at 20 to 40 minutes when it gives the second therapy, he talks about intravenous phosphinantoin, valproic acid, levetiracetam, etc. He does not talk of a second dose of benzodiazepine. Therefore, there is a difference in that. The second dose of benzodiazepine is not mentioned in this Nelson's test book of pediatrics. That's one point. And in, a current, in, any, in an editorial, which is written in the, 
in the uh, about status epilepticus in Indian pediatrics, which I have already mentioned. It is four editorials in this journal, quoting a study which has done. They say in the current study, this is the Indian one comment. The second dose of midazolam was not effective in any of the children it was administered. There, then the study they had given midazolam as the dose and not lorazepam. It resulted in further delay in administering the second line of anti-epileptic drugs. So this may be taken as evidence of skipping this step in the protocol. Now, and further they say the advanced life support algorithm advises two doses of benzapine 10 minutes apart, followed by phenantoin a further 10 minutes as a second line of treatment. Therefore, there are marginal differences in the, in the uh, advice given. But generally, a second dose of lorazepam is advised at 10, 10 minutes after the seizure has started, five minutes after the first dose has been given. Now, if you are encountering an examiner who is in the Nelson's era, you might get into trouble because Nelson does not say a second dose of benzodiazepine even at 20 minutes. Coming to the discussion of second line of treatment at 15 minutes after giving the first dose of benzodiazepine at 5 and 10 minutes. While evidence of good quality supports the use of benzodiazepine as a first line of treatment and SC, such evidence informing the administration of second or third line treatment is lacking. Therefore, there is some confusion in the minds of the clinicians. What should be the medicine? What should be the IV medication in this emergency after the first line of benzodiazepine? The medication considered a phenantoin and phosphenantoin, which has been used for ages, phosphenantoin being a newer medication, more popular in the USA than Europe, sodium valproate, very popular to all over Europe, levetiracetam is a new entrant, this seems to be having some advantages, phenobarbital was also used for ages, it was it's even now popular in newborn period, quite effective, but because of his respiratory depression, when you give a barbiturate after benzodiazepine, it, uh, it is not used so commonly. We will not be discussing phenobarbital further. Since we, this is an important point, this is an important point of the presentation, the whole presentation, the decision, we will go into what is the evidence behind, uh, what is the important studies, what is the evidence, so that we can make an intelligent choice at the end of the presentation. Let's look at the, some important international studies. CONCEPT trial, which is known as a convulsive status epilepticus pediatric trial, which was done mainly in the hospitals in uh, Australia and New Zealand, is an open labeled randomized controlled trial. 234 children aged six, three months to 16 years presenting with convulsive status. Patients had already received two doses of benzodiazepine. Levetiracetam 40 mg per kg over 5 minutes intervention, intravenous was the intervention, and comparison was with the standard treatment which we used to give previously, which is phenantoin 20 mg IV or intravenous. Primary outcome was a clinical cessation of seizure activity 5 minutes after infusion con uh, uh, completion. Therefore, this is real time. This is how you do. You give phenantoin over 20 minutes. Now a new medicine has come. Look here, the dose is 40 milligram and is given over five minutes. There's some importance in that. The second most quoted international study is the Eclipse trial. The emergency treatment with levetiracetam of phenantoin in status epilepticus in children. It's again an open label controlled trial. It's done in 30 emergency department in the UK. The number, you look at the number, they have taken 404 children in six, from six months to 18 years, presenting with convulsive status epilepticus where, epilepticus where randomized. The intervention and, and comparison were the same as the CONCEPT trial. Levetiracetam 40 mg per kg over five minutes and phenantoin 20 mg per kg over 20 minutes, real life situations. However, the primary outcome was slightly different. Here we use medium time to seizure control. While we, there, we use the number of children who were controlled within five minutes. Therefore, there is a difference in the primary outcome. But both these studies surprisingly showed levetiracetam was neither more effective 
no safer than phenytoin in either trial. This was surprising in both Europe and America, and where they considered that levetiracetam would be at least more safe because phenytoin had so many problems. But in real life situation, there was not much advantage which was seen. And uh, it was also seen from these studies, we can confidently say from both these studies, nearly only 50% of the children with convulsive status will clinically resolve after treatment with either of these second line anticonvulsants. Remember that when you started giving benzodiazepine, usually the first line 70% recover, out of the 30%, another 50%, that is about 15% from the beginning, would, would finally, uh, after the second line is over, respond to your treatment. The established status epilepticus treatment trial, ESET trial, showed that the intravenous levetiracetam, phosphenitoin, and valproate. Therefore, the, here they included valproate also. This is an American study. Showed no significant differences in the groups in terms of median time to seizure, seizure cessation, seizure recurrence in 1 to 12, 12 hours after drug infusion, or rates of life-threatening hypotension, arrhythmia, or death. Therefore, neither in the side effects nor in the effectiveness. This study, which also included valproate, did not show any difference from the American, I mean, this American study. This is an American study. Now, you have to see some Indian studies also have been done in this. This has been published in the Indian Pediatrics as late as 2020 and commented on editorially also. Here, instead of phosphenantoin, they use phenantoin. Phenantoin, valproate, and levetiracetam at a dose of 20 mg per kg infusion, while the ESET trial used for higher dose. Over 20 minutes were equally efficacious in the management of pediatric convulsive status epilepticus, not responding to a single dose of lorazepam. The other one was two doses of lorazepam, and patient had similar neurological outcome at three month interval. Therefore, the Indian study also more or less showed that the three drugs were equally efficacious and the side effects were also comparable. But the difference they showed was there was a better seizure control. Levetiracetam 94, phenantoin 89, and valproate 83% when compared to other studies that had used much higher dosage. Remember, this Indian study used much lower dosage and had a better results while the Western studies had only about 50% control of the seizures, the Indian studies showed in children a higher study. Maybe these, because the research study also involved adult patients. The fact that the dose used in the study, 20 mg per kg, was well below the internationally recommended dose. For levetiracetam, in the study, they used 40 mg per kg in international studies. Actually, the American uh, epilepsy Society now says give up to 60 mg per kg. The Indians are giving a much lower dose, 20 mg, but as better outcomes suggest the regional variation in dose will improve the outcome and reduce adverse effect while using these options. There are, these are, however, you know, there is a problem in the Indian study. They use a uniform infusion of 20 minutes taken by blinding compared to 10 minutes and 5 minutes infusion by other trials might have impacted the time of seizure control by valproate and levetiracetam, which are safer to be used faster. Because for blinding purposes, the Indian study used gave all the drugs in 20 minutes time. This is a drawback of the study. For what does the Indian study show? Lower dose, better seizure control, almost 90% seizure control among the patients who were benzodiazepine resistant, but you, mind you, they gave it after one dose of benzodiazepine, lower dose. Now, is it a regional variation? Is it because of the difference in the etiology? Because in India, you will find more of the seizures have an underlying etiology like encephalitis, meningitis, TBM, etc. Although levetiracetam has not proved to be more efficacious or less toxic than phenantoin, less side effects than phenantoin, it has certain advantage. This includes the ease of preparation and administration, minimal interaction with anti-epilepsy drugs and other drugs, anti-epilepsy and other drugs, 
an easy conversion to oral maintenance therapy. Levetiracetam was well tolerated when administered over 5 minutes and a more rapid rate than previously reported. However, the present Indian literature of the IV preparation available states that it should be given over 15 minutes in 100 ml of fluid. Therefore, that negates this advantage. Agitation was the most common adverse effect, but I have never encountered that. Now, hypotension, cardiac arrhythmias, and severe extravasation injuries are well recognized adverse effects of phenantoin. The phenantoin has many other side effects also. It's bound to albumin. It is, does not have a linear dose uh, effect uh, uh, curve. And uh, therefore, it induces the liver enzyme, cytochrome enzyme. Therefore, drug interactions are very high. But in spite of all this, in real practice studies, we did not find a much issues with this. However, the pharmacologists are not happy with this, especially because some of the cardiovascular effect might be fatal. But this has led to some pharmacologists and neurologists at a particular university in USA. Call for, they called for an establishment of Libertra Sectum as a top choice for the second line SC treatment in the United States. There's a movement that they are now advocating everywhere to switch from phosphenantoin to uh, Levetra sector. In fact, the pharmacologists are more vocal than this. Uh, in the, the Journal of Pediatric Pharmacology in 2020, they have commended when the lack of evidence of evidence-based data to support the continuous use of PhD is accompanied by significant disadvantages, it escapes all reason that PhD continues to be used as the first line AED for benzodiazepine refractive generalized convulsive status epilepticus. They are aghast that we are continuing to use it. And you might think their opinion may not count, but actually more and more clinical pharmacologists do come for rounds in most of the advanced countries as well as corporate hospitals along with the doctors. And it may not be possible to ignore their opinion for long. Now, what is the final stand we have to take on this? Of all these discussions, all these I would go by what is written in the Lancet in 2019. I'll read it very slowly. Although levetiracetam was not significantly superior to phenantoin, the results together with the previously reported safety profiles and comparative ease of administration of levetiracetam su suggest that it could be an appropriate alternative to phenantoin as the first choice second line anticonvulsant in the treatment of pediatric convulsive status epilepticus. This is what I would also drive in. Taking all this into consideration, in spite of the fact that studies in real life did not show much advantages or less side effects, it should still be considered as a first choice, second line anticonvulsant in the treatment of pediatric convulsive status epilepticus. Remember, that is not being in practice today if you look in India, this is not so. Not only in India, in USA, it is phosphenantoin, which is given in 90% of the cases. All over Europe, valproate is preferred. But even then, this is a switch in our practice, which might be, might have to do. It's time now to summarize the whole. For this, I have used the algorithm given in up to date, which I think is the best is up-to-date 2021 management of status epilepticus in children, and it gives assessment, support to care, etc. We are looking only at the drug treatment. My subject is only initial drug treatment. We are looking only at the drugs. Now, benzodiazepine, lorazepam, at 5 minutes, for 0 0.1 milligram per kg IV, maximum 4 milligram, it can also be given in torches. It also gives the other alternate medicines we can give. Now, there, should, there need be no problems in that we have discussed this, but there are a few issues. How fast to give? If you look at Harriet Lane, it is 0.05 to 0.1 milligram per kg over two to five minutes. Great. But BNF is another standard formulary, British National Formulary states. I brought it up what is given here for you to see. 2020 states that lowers a pump by slow intravenous injection. No mention of any dilution or time of administration. This is what happens when one doctor says push, one doctor says dilute, one doctor keeps quiet, therefore the nurse gets confused. It's very important that we know how fast to give because we want to hit hard, we, we want to hit fast in status epilepticus. To add to the confusion, if you look at the initial up to date in 2018, that's the maximum I could get on. 
I will push. It says give it push in one minute, not two to five minutes. Now, finally, if you look at the Neurocritical Care Society, American Epilepsy Society, guidelines for status epilepticus, it insists on diluting with one is to one saline because it contains propylene glycol. All this information can, comes in multiple sources. And if you are a uh, uh, appreciator of the Indian guidelines, the consensus guideline on the management of childhood convulsive status epilepticus, Indian pediatrics says 0.1 milligram per kg, maximum 4 milligram. We already heard this at 2 milligram per minute. The rate is 2 milligram per minute. This is worth keeping in mind. If I have summarized all this to be my recommendation, which is if you give lorazepam 0.1 milligram, all of you know, better diluting 1 is to 1 saline, give it over 2 to 5 minutes. Or if this might be too slow, you can give 2 milligram per minute. Therefore, if you have a child 20 kg who's about six or seven years old, you can give it in a minute's time because that's the rate that is recommended by the Indian Academy of Pediatrics. And the maximum should be four milligram. Now, we have already said that if you don't have IV, IV IM metazolam is the best, next best drug of choice. Now, next comes the 10 minutes. 10 minutes is the dose, the same dose can be repeated, though Nelson does not talk about it. Now, there is some problem in this. You should realize, though we say five minutes and 10 minutes, etc., often it is not pro possible practically because if you are going to push in lorazepam or a period of two to five minutes, by the time it is over, it will already be 10 minutes from the start of seizure. You may have to wait for some more time before you give the second dose. Whatever it is, try to give at least five minutes, or wait for at least five minutes after the first dose you have given fully. And that is why I say the first dose, you push it at two milligram per minute. That means in a minute or two and do not even two to five minutes, never use an infusion. Now at 15 minutes, you are supposed to give, we have agreed to give levetiracetam only. The dose is little disputable. 60 milligram per kg IV or, I, IV or IO, maximum single dose 4,500 milligram. The 60 milligram is the American Epilepsy Society dosage, which is given. If you recollect the concept trial, the dose was 40 milligram per kg over five minutes. If you look at the Eclipse trial, it's again levetiracetam 40 milligram per kg over five minutes intravenous. Uh, if, and if you recollect the Indian studies were giving only 20 milligram per kg. If you now this is the package insert of the medicine that is available in India, that is levipil. And if you read it carefully, we have supposed to follow at the end of the day what is given in the package insert. Levitram concentrate or infusion, 500 milligram per ml, should, should be diluted in 100 ml of a compatible dilute and administered intravenously at a 15 minute infusion. If I have summarized it by giving 15 minutes of seizure, maybe it will be 20 or 25 minutes by the time you give it. 40 milligram per kg IV or IO diluted in 100 ml of compatible diluent over 15 minutes, maximum 4,500 milligram. This may not be hitting hard, hitting hard and hitting early because you're, when internationally it's accepted to give over five minutes. If you look at the package insert of Kepra, the internationally available IV levetra sector, it also states about giving it over a period of 15 minutes only. But if you... Uh, giving it, but in the Western literature now, they say nowadays it can be given over five minutes. I checked it with the pediatric neurologist in India and they say better give it over 15 minutes. For, therefore, for the safety of your patient and the safety of yourself, the physician, I would advise you give compared to the 100 ml, dilute over 15 minutes. We may not be hitting it hard. We may not be hitting early. Now, if this has happened and you are going to do 15 minutes, you are given Kepra, by the time it's over, it's going to be 30 minutes or even longer. What's the medicine to give? If you look at up to date, it says if you are given levetiracetam, give phosphenantoin or valproate. IV valproate is not available. They advise if you are given levetiracetam, you can give phenobarbitone also. But I would not advise it because phenobarbitone after two doses of lorazepam can be a respiratory depressant. And they also advise of giving pyridoxine. 
Now, one thing which I would ask is consider metazolam infusion at 15 minutes or 30 minutes. I mean, you, this is something which I am very much used to. And uh, it gives it a loading dose of 0.15 milligram per kg, followed by a continuous infusion of one microgram per kg and titrate the dose upward every five minutes. And the dose is usually it gets controlled between two to three microgram per kg, maximum four microgram. But in an ICU setting, they say you can give up to 18 microgram per kg per minute. And how to prepare it, I have given it here also. Because I've been using this medicine. In fact, after two doses of metazolam and giving it diphenantoin, I immediately make up the mixture and keep it ready to give. I found it very, very useful, and many of my colleagues will vouch for it. However, mind you that the Indian guideline in 2014, the ICU setting, start metazolam infusion, and in case not available, start another second line treatment. Therefore, they are telling in ICU setting. Therefore, you have to be a little careful. Therefore, if you have an ICU ready, your beds are being arranged, you can probably give a metazolam. I would even give otherwise, but if you are not, you want to play safe, you give whatever medicine you have not given. Like if you are given levetiracetam as the second line, you have to give phosphinantoin. If you are given phosphinantoin in the second line, use levetiracetam. Therefore, summarizing the summary, at five minutes and 10 minutes, there's absolutely no controversy. It is lorazepam. At 15 minutes, I would put it on orange because levetiracetam, of course, still the drug already. And at 30 minutes, I would prefer to give metazolam. A little dangerous if you don't have an ICU, but I found it very, very effective. If you don't want to give it, if you are given levetiracetam, you can give diphenantoin. If you are given phenantoin, you can use levetiracetam here. Thank you for your time. If you want to contact me to give any comments, please do so in my email or WhatsApp me in the mobile number given below. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.